the enthronement of these evolutionary thoughts into the origin of man has brought about many societal vicissitudes as it has changed widely held religious and traditional historical perspectives. One perspective is how we view and value the Constitution of the United States. In America's founding documents are declarations rooted in natural law, which form the foundational beginnings of America's liberties. These foundational declarations enshrined in the Constitution and Declaration of Independence are based on the belief that rights are not granted by man, but are endowed by our Creator. These immutable laws have interwoven into them a belief that they were inspired by God with the thought that children are divine creatures, touched by the finger of God, that marriage is ordained of God, and that the natu natural family is an eternal creation of God. While in New York doing some research, I drove up this country road atop Bristol Mountain, just a short distance from Rochester and Palmyra, New York. I saw an advertisement for a bookstore advertising old and rare books. So I turned in to this long driveway past this old turn of the century home. And in the rear was this beautiful old remodeled barn, climate controlled, and with books that had been st stacked from the floor to the ceiling. There I found a book authored by Frederick Ingalls, a man who co-authored with Karl Marx, The Communist Manifesto. In this 1893 book, The Origin of the Family, Private Property Rights, and the State, upon opening the front cover of this book, I read the words in light of the researches of Lewis Henry Morgan, where Frederick Ingalls gave credit to Morgan for many insights that he shared. As Ingalls in this book would insist that the family was a human creation, by glorious institution that must be done away with, he would go on to say of Morgan that he reconstructed the form of the family and thereby opened up a new path of investigations and a more far-reaching retrospect into the prehistory of mankind." Unquote. In the winter of 1880 to 1881, Karl Marx drew up with great care over a hundred pages of excerpts from Morgan's book, Ancient Society, excerpts later used by Ingalls in his book, The Origin of the Family. Another book that I found in this old and used bookstore was the 1888 printing of Thomas Malthus's 1798 book, The Principles of Population, which has been used as a Bible for the worldwide sustainability and population control movement. As he advanced the idea that food production cannot keep pace with population growth, as a result, it has inspired us to do three documentaries on population and on demographics. Demographic Winter, The Decline of the Human Family, Demographic Bomb, Demography is Destiny, and The New Economic Reality, Demographic Winter. In these documentaries, it shows of the disintegration of the natural family which has taken place worldwide. Looking at the low replacement fertility rates, the aging population, and what that has and will have in store for the future of society. In the fourth chapter of this book, Thomas Malthus advised the American government that the best way to keep the Indians' populations in check is to control their food supply. And so the, he, they heeded that advice by killing millions of buffalo as part of this Manifest Destiny agenda and this great land grab. Today, may I make a clarion call to the Indian nations to rise up, to once again become a beacon of hope to this nation. On October 4th, 1988, Congress passed a concurrent resolution acknowledging the contributions of the Iroquois Confederacy to this nation in the development of the United States Constitution. 
as the framers of the Constitution, most notably George Washington and Benjamin Franklin, did incorporate principles found in the Iroquois Confederacy of Nations into the Constitution. Ben Franklin, inspired by these Indians, who many viewed to be the children of Israel, proposed that the seal of the United States be this seal, which shows Moses leading the Israelite nation out of the tyranny to freedom, stating, Rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. In this presentation, I have attempted to pull the curtain back on the significant influence that these early men of science and government have exercised on America. For this is a larger history that is laden for implications for our day. As foundational theories looking into the origin of the mound builders and the evolution of man became foundational footings in the advancement of manifest destiny, communism, and social Darwinism. In closing, let me just say that there are those who would seek to close the history books of man's experiences, history that shows weakness, shortcomings, and prejudices, and man's inhumanity to man in the pursuit of a better world